Hi there, thanks for coming to ART. So today, we're gonna to continue our series of African American Artist Studies, and our artist today is Alma Woodsley Thomas. And as you can probably guess by the background behind me, her work is all about color. She was an African American expressionist painter, which was also an educator like me. She's best known for her colorful abstract compositions. Her style of painting included large abstract painting filled with dense patterns of bright colors, like the ones behind me. And when they were done, they almost mimicked a mosaic pattern. In fact, some people, when they do work inspired by her, cut up little pieces of paper and make mosaics. She created color field paintings in which the entire focus of the artwork is color and color theory. Resurrection, which is a big um, circular painting, kind of like this, is one of the, uh, her color field paintings, and it was chosen by the Obamas when they were in the White House to hang in the dining room during Black History Month. So stay tuned, make sure you look up Alma Thomas's work, and then I will show you how to make one of your own. So for this project, you're going to need a piece of paper. Um, I'm going to give you a small piece of very nice quality watercolor paper. When I started this project, I realized it is time consuming. It gave me such an appreciation for the work that Alma Thomas put into her really large paintings. So I started off doing this one inspired by Alma and I realized it takes a lot of time and patience to fill it in and I'm not sure middle schoolers have a lot of time and patience, so I decided to give you a smaller piece of paper. Now, the next thing you have to do is look at Alma Thomas's work. Do you like her line pieces like this? Do you prefer a circular one? Or do you prefer one that gives you the suggestion of a landscape? You decide. I think it's helpful to have her work up. No need to copy it, but it does really inspire you as you go along and it gives you ideas of how to start. So when Alma Thomas did her work, she actually penciled in some areas first. If you go to a museum and see her work, you can actually see some of the pencil lines still on the canvas. So I might start with that circle and I might do a few lines. You can or you don't have to. Now, in addition to your piece of paper, you're going to need paints. And I am going to give to you a new set of watercolor paints like this. And they're great colors, but I found that I use both my watercolors and my temper cakes. So I would say have both of those ready, your piece of paper or your sketchbook, your two sets of paints, and I have two cups of water and also some tissues and paper towels because these paint cooks, uh, cakes get dirty and you're going to want to clean them off because if you don't, you're going to have muddy colors. And Alma Thomas definitely didn't use muddy colors. So to get started, I am going to look at this for an idea. I like a soft watercolor brush and in this set was included this little tiny brush which I thought, well that's a silly little brush and we should just throw it away. It turns out it is perfect for this project even though it's a little hard to hold. So I am going to get my colors wet. The first thing you want to do when your colors get your colors wet is start with the lightest color because part of doing this well is not getting your colors all mixed up and muddy. You'll definitely need to do some stop in the middle and cleaning. I'm getting out a bigger paintbrush to put water on these colors. And the reason I added this set mainly is because it has white. So let's get started. If you're doing a circular painting, which is what the one I'm going to demonstrate, there's no need to do a circular painting, but I just want to show you a little bit about how to apply the paint on your piece of paper. I'm going to start with a light green. I don't have a light green, so I am going to mix yellow and a little green together to get a light green. And then I am just going to paint that in. Oh, it's not green enough for me. It's a little better. I'd love that color, but it'll be fine. Now, what I found out is when I do this, that I really had to kind of experiment to figure out my style of applying the paint. When she applies it, it's just not random. She really does get a pattern. And as you go along, 
you're going to develop your way of applying the paint to get a pattern. And it's really kind of relaxing until you do it for too long and then suddenly you want to rush and it's not relaxing anymore. And if you get to that point, you know what I'm going to tell you to do? Just stop, come back later and work on it some more. It's a wonderful thing to work on a little bit at a time and then come back to it. So I've got, I've got some green, I've got a blue. Maybe I'll go out in the color wheel. I think Alma went to red next, but I think I'm gonna try some purple. And a very handy thing to have here is a testing paper. So I'm gonna use this back, this testing paper, to test out my color. I thought I had purple and it turns out I had blue. Also, is it too watery? If it's too watery, just take a tissue and dab a little bit and then you'll find the right. And so just figure out your style, keep going, take your time, have fun, and fill your whole paper with color and a bit of pattern. Again, if you want circle or straight lines. Stay tuned. So as you go along, don't forget to stop occasionally and clean off your pink cakes so that they stay the right color. And just carry on. I'm going to make some more light green going out instead of going all the way to yellow like Alma Thomas did. Remember, you can do whichever colors you choose. Just make sure you think about doing it in an organized way so we will all know that you understand about the work of Alma Thomas. So stay tuned. Fill in your work all the way to the edges. You might do circulars, you might do straights, but when you're all done, don't forget to take a picture of your work and send it to me. I can't wait to see it.